हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू द चैप्टर नाइनटीन ऑफ हिमाटोलॉजी दैट इज हेरिडिटरी स्पीरोसाइटोसिस इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न ऑल अबाउट इट एंड कंसिडर सब्सक्राइबिंग टू माई चैनल फॉर मोर ऑफ सच मेडिकल लेक्चर्स एंड हेल्थ टिप्स एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू फॉलो अस ऑन अ फेसबुक एंड इंस्टाग्राम पेज हेरिडिटरी स्पीरोसाइटोसिस हेरिडिटरी स्पीरोसाइटोसिस it is an inherited disorder of rbcs so in this hemolytic anemia the main problem is with the rbcs now problem is in the cell membrane whatever problem or the cause which happens is because there is some problem in the cell membrane normally rbcs are biconcave shape now this biconcave shape it has the advantage because it is highly flexible but in this hereditary spirocytosis the biconcave shape is turned to spherical shape now to understand why the rbcs become spherical we have to understand the normal cytoskeleton of the rbc the normal rbcs are biconcave and the advantage is they are flexible now advantage of this is flexibility rbc pass through capillaries capillaries are the smallest vessels in our bodies which are almost 3 micron in diameter and in some of these uh, vessels of spleen such as in the uh, cord of billroth the diameter of the vessels is less or almost equal to 2 micron but whereas the normal rbc has 7 micron so the 7 micron cell has to pass through the capillaries and spleen so it usually twists itself bends itself and then passes through the capillaries and the spleen but due to spherical shape it cannot pass through this and it will lead to rupture or hemolysis that is what happens in hereditary spirocytosis now in normal cell membrane in a normal rbc it has several important proteins such as ankyrin band 3 protein and spectrin abs is kind of a mnemonic for you guys to remember now usually there are bands of proteins such as spectrin and ankyrin which helps the band 3 usually this is how the cell membrane of the rbc looks like now mainly and the most commonly affected in hereditary spirocytosis is ankyrin so ankyrin is the thing which is which has problem in it now basically if they are in, in spherical shape and whenever they pass through these small vessels they lead to rupture that is hemolysis and as this hemolysis is outside the vessels and it is into the organ spleen hence it is called as extravascular hemolytic anemia so now we come to the other aspects such as clinical features so basically in this uh, type of anemia you can see there is anemia and symptoms of anemia such as uh, paleness and reduced blood count all those you can see due to destruction the number of rbc cells are decreased and that will lead to anemia and there is jaundice because of excessive premature death of the rbcs it will lead to excessive uh, bilirubin in the blood leading to jaundice and as the hemolysis takes place in the spleen and the spleen vessels are so small and these rbcs can't pass through them it takes and the macrophages in the spleen destroy these rbcs so that will lead to excessive work of the spleen leading to its uh, enlargement that is splenomegaly so these are the main three clinical features anemia jaundice and splenomegaly so how it is usually found uh, diagnosis whenever you take the peripheral smear of a blood you can see that uh, in spe- hereditary spirocytosis usually in a normal rbc uh, hemoglobin what happens is there is slight central paler and the hemoglobin is usually at the peripheral but in hereditary spirocytosis there is no central paler and hemoglobin is distributed equally 
So this is one aspect which you can see in the hereditary spirocytosis. Osmotic fragility test, it is usually uh, in a test tube in a, a hypertonic solution. The RBCs are placed and it is checked. That is how it takes place. Even that will help us in determination of the hereditary spirocytosis. Some of the complications. Now, susceptible to increased infections. Usually, as I told, the problem comes because the spleen has small vessels and RBCs can't pass through and there is destruction. So, main thing what they do in hereditary spirocytosis treatment is they f perform splenectomy. If there, is, if there is no spleen, then there is no hemolysis of the RBCs. So, that is what they do here. But that will lead... If there is no spleen, they are, the, we are prone to more parvovirus infections. So, we are susceptible to increased infections and even increased risk of pigment gallstones. We might, there are risks of pigment gallstones and aplastic crisis. So, these are few complications of the hereditary spirocytosis. As I told earlier, treatment is mainly splenectomy is done over here. So this was all about hereditary spirocytosis. Thank you for watching the video. Comment if you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching the video.